Are we just going to talk about other people's shit? Oh, yeah, well, I mean, isn't that, isn't that the point of this podcast? Speaking of other people's shit, welcome to Undercooked and Now. <laughs> By the way, 2014 was peak year of podcasting because that was the year this podcast came out. <laughs> no, if we refer to any other movies during this uh, episode, we need to look it up and find out if it's from 96 or 97. That's a good idea. If you want an explanation as to why, uh, you need to be a patron because that was some pretty <laughs> choice drags, honestly. Some point, future David's going to figure out where the cutoff <laughs> is going to be, and it's going to be glorious for that part. Um. Uh, by the way, uh, I, I'm Kayla. Uh, Hi, this, Kayla. This next to me is David. And we've we've never met before. Never. Never. Even though we have the same last name. We do. Yeah. That's a that's that's uncanny. Yeah, and here's the funny part: it's not even my birth last name. What? So you married someone named King? Yeah, <laughs> weird. That's shit. that's such a coincidence. Weird shit. Yeah, and of course we're joined by uh, <laughs> uh, we're joined by Alan Janey or Alex Torney or whatever his uh, um, or Charlie Bucket the cheese maker. Or Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, Welcome to the podcast. Uh, we will have our Independence Day, nineteen ninety six. Yeah, we're gonna have to find. Oh out. my god, that's right. So, how old would you be if we went by A B years then? Because we've got to figure that out now. Um, oh, like, how, old, how old we were in 1996? No, by Airbud years. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, like, wait, what? Let's I'm see. Confused. I'm confused by this. Well, I'm so, sure our listeners are too. But again, <laughs> Voice Drags, uh, which is available only for our patrons. 97? So, yes. Yeah, we'd all be the same age. This is a dumb question. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, Alan's a couple years older than we are. And David's actually... 24. We're all 24 years old. A- yeah. A- B. <laughs> We're all 24. Oh my god, I've regained my youth. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, I thought I, you were almost... just asking how old we were in dog years. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a dumb question. Edit this out. Never think about this again. <laughs> Talk about regaining our youth. What is this story about babies? Oh yeah, so... Oh yeah, uh... I'm, I'm Paprika. Uh, oh yeah, hi. yeah. I was trying to introduce paprika, and then it delved into cheese makers. And- we actually haven't had paprika on the show in a long time, so welcome back. Yeah, thank you. I'm excited to be here, and We're- I'm and I'm coming for you, Alan Cheney. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's got. She's gunning for your position. I'm kidding. <laughs> she's not. I kidding. like. I like that. Alan's Sorry, just I like- thought. Sorry, I thought somehow a Skeksy had gotten on the call. (laughs) 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 It's uncomfortable how good Simon Pegg can do that voice in the Netflix series. He just goes, he's, you know, he comes in and he's just like, (laughs) I'm like, that's, that's very unnatural that Simon Pegg can do that. That's creepy. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so for context though, the only context, uh, everybody in the general public gets is that we're reading another yet yeah, another story by our old friend Kane Mac. Uh Kane Mac a while back, like months ago at this rate, um, sent us a whole slew of stories. We've read two of them on the show so far, which was a game of tag and uh the dog in the abandoned house. Oh yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. So this is the third one from the collection uh that she sent and it's called Something Went Wrong with My Baby. I knew I would get around to this at some point. Um, In the email, she did warn me, and I guess this is a sort of a content warning for anybody listening. She said, you may not want to read this on the show because your mileage may vary because it it features violence against a baby. But I read it a little, I screened it, I pre-screened it a little bit beforehand. There's not violence inflicted on the baby by other people. There's violence inflicted on the baby by the baby. And that, and I don't, I don't want to give a. I did. I don't oh, have gotten better. far enough to know what the twist is yet, but I think. <laughs> well, it's I, to me. Okay, I'm I just mean, saying. I feel like you shouldn't have told us that yet, but it's done. well. I, I, that's a, at least as far as I know. For all we know, baby is tormented by something. I, I mean, if you, I don't know. It'd be like if you spoiled the ending to Matilda, which came out in 1996. <laughs> <laughs> oh crap! And Matilda's another really good movie. Yeah, yeah, I actually really like Matilda. I like Matilda as well. Who doesn't um, like Matilda? There's a couple people who, who does that, whoever don't. doesn't like a Matilda. Matilda's a fascist. Yeah, <laughs> fascist. Jesus, it's a pre- hard, nothing but hard truths here, mm-hmm. and and yeah. and 
Flash so David. this this story we're reading today was it written in 1996 or 1997? I don't know. You'd have to ask uh, Kane Mac. Mm. But but How that, old is that's... Kane Mac in Airbud years. <laughs> that said, like 24. It... Oh, okay. <laughs> Everybody, everybody's 24 at AB years. Yeah, that's what we determined. So my my main thing that I, I guess the whole gist of what I'm saying here is, regardless of how you feel, content warning: violence against infant. If, if that makes you uncomfortable, if that makes you uncomfortable, we had a pretty good intro, so you're probably good to stop here. <laughs> I hope you had fun. If you're willing to deal with that, then or not deal. With, if you're okay with it, if like, you're okay with it, like, you're a monster. You, that's I'm just saying, like, uh-huh. <laughs> if dead babies don't bother you. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> we're not sure if a baby dies yet. We're not sure if a baby no. dies. There might be a dead baby. Ba- basically. That's a that wow. That the long pause <laughs> after that was like I mean, we've read some dark shit on this podcast. We sure have. So I don't think I think this is still kind of new territory. I mean, there's always if a you're into, if it's you like the like a horror people. podcast. Wait, what? <laughs> if, if you're into the finest of creepy pasta, come on down to Undercooked Analysis. There might be a dead baby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is a horror podcast. Mm-hmm. People we are understand reading horror- that, but we are reading horror stories. Your mileage may vary. So, with that out of the way, the story is called Something Went Wrong with My Baby. Paprika goes first. Oh, okay. Why me? <laughs> What are you trying to say? <laughs> we're, I also we're like, to, uh, if, I think... if this story gets as fucked up as it does, I do like the idea that it was, the preface to it was a bunch of dorks talking about Airbud. <laughs> 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 yeah, when this story ends really badly and we're still trying to make jokes about Airbud, people are going to think we're messed up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll we have to bring le- we have to bring levity to it somehow because 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 thankfully this right because this is a creative in. comedy podcast. This is a yeah that the whole idea is this creative comedy podcast with help. It's just critique. a lot of unpleasantness, pleasantness sandwiched <laughs> between the delight the delightful fresh baked bread of a dog playing basketball. <laughs> <laughs> and I say paprika first because technically your birthday is the first before any of ours. Oh, no. That's the order we're deciding things in yes. this episode. That's the arbitrary order we're deciding I'm things. Because then after that would be Alan, then it would be me, then it would be you. That's fair. Okay. I We mm-hmm. have to decide it arbitrarily anyway, so. Mm-hmm. Okay. I honestly just pulled that out of my ass, so. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. Good job. I, I I love it when Kayla pulls stuff out of her ass. <laughs> like, jeez. <laughs> okay. You can't see it, but the look on my face. <laughs> Okay, um, I have been a new mother for a few months now. As you can imagine, it was an amazing experience for me. Semicolon. Holding my baby boy for the first time in a hospital bed felt unreal. It probably sounds cheesy, eh, but I believe <laughs> my baby is the most beautiful baby in the world. And a healthy one at that. We did all the screenings and everything turned out okay. I left the hospital a day later thinking this was all a dream come true. I was just relieved that I wasn't in labor anymore. <laughs> right. Well, uh, I don't know. This is like weird how, uh, yeah. I, I mean, just having a baby, right? So I can't say anything. Go read somebody. Uh, <laughs> I think it's you are, most undoubtedly, you are undoubtedly the most beautiful thing I've ever pushed out of my body. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not like you can make poor pearls in your mouth, you know. Could you imagine Says if you, you could you imagine if you were a human being who produced pearls, though? Well, okay. What if you put an oyster in your mouth and then you opened it with your with your teeth, and there's a pearl in that oyster? Does that mean you? Produce- <laughs> No, no, what you have to do is bury yourself up to your head in sand and coat the in- interior of your mouth with knacker. And then... Okay. <laughs> well, your body well Andy naturally- wasn't really a crybaby. <laughs> she never bad fact, baby, Andy. She wa- and little Andy wasn't really a pearl either, but... In fact, I don't really remember a time he'd cried during those first few days. I think I was still wearing rose-tinted glasses of motherhood to actually notice that. Ugh. 
Okay. But time went on, and the fact that a few-day-old infant hadn't yet shed a single tear started to thaw my enthusiasm. Thaw your huh. enthusiasm is the... But well, here's what, actually... why, 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 <laughs> so from what I've been told by mothers, that it's usually the fact that they're crying constantly that drives them insane. So um, my mom has told me that the difference between my birth and my brother's birth is I came out screaming my head off, and... Um, <laughs> Robin came out so quiet they were all like, What the heck? <laughs> this can't be this this can't be our child. Is it a pearl? They, they were <laughs> I gave birth to a pearl that looks suspiciously like a human. Uh I asked my doctor about this. She explained that it happens, that some infants are simply less vocal than others. Andy might express his needs differently and would probably cry only when in distress. She added that I should keep an eye out for any uh, other abnormalities and with a hint of enthusiasm suggested to treat this as a blessing i returned home and started paying more attention to andy as did all the toys oh god i had the th- same thought actually mm-hmm. uh david do you want to keep reading or yeah I'll, i can take i can take more because that was a super short you can you can take it i can i can i can take it do it do okay. it coward you can right take then. the cheese pipe <laughs> I'll, I'll take all right then this episode is going to be fondly remembered for the lack of context. Or this is like a giant plug for Patreon. At this point. Yeah, my the bad. Doctor- Sorry. Sorry. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. We're gonna make new jokes for this episode, so let's stick to the pearls and no, 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 and the oysters. <laughs> but like you know, who? I think that honestly, at some point, if people just keep bringing up the the bit about uh, the cheese, though, we just got to be like, yo, who cut the cheese? Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. The doctor was right. Andy wasn't really vocal. Most newborns only observe the world around them, but he seemed even more reserved. This aloofness applied to everything he did. He barely ate, slept less than an average baby, and when approached, would only stare at the observer without losing eye contact. He had astounding blue eyes and a lot of wrinkles around them, and because of that, he had a constant perplexed look on his face. Like he couldn't understand what was happening to him. My husband Ray and I thought it was adorable at the time. He had a what-the-fuck look about his face. (laughs) Just yeah, just, I've seen those baby faces mm-hmm. where they're just looking like, oh my god, what the hell am I doing? Uh, I just want to just just for context clues, <clears throat> the fact that it was this is there's something went wrong with my baby, and it's there, um he had astounding blue eyes. That's past tense. I'm kind of concerned. Mm-hmm. Now he has ugly brown eyes. When <laughs> uh, when Andy was about two weeks old, he started to become more erratic. He would lie in his crib, looking at his twiddling arms and legs and putting his hands in front of his face. He would open his mouth, his face clutch, clutched in a flustered expression, gasping for air, grunting and snorting. The first time I saw it, I was unnerved as it, as it seemed like he was having breathing problems. I tried the Heimlich maneuver on him, but unsurprisingly, it, was only intensified, it only intensified Andy's agitation. I called the doctor who assured me it wasn't anything dire and we can wait till the morning to take Andy for a checkup with a feeling of uneasiness in my mind. I just, I decided to call it a day. How much you want to bet this doctor is also Dr. Apathy. (laughs) Our old friend, Dr. Apathy. I haven't heard of Dr. Apathy in so long. (laughs) I'm really just imagining that phone call and her describing what's going on and just like someone on the like. Yeah, that's probably fine. (laughs) (laughs) I was bleeding out of his ears. It's fine. (laughs) Yeah, but okay. Why do people? How does how does Doctor Apathy keep their practice? I swear. I, I mean, basically, people they say, "Oh, he's fine," and people like hearing that. Uh, At three in the morning. Oh wait, it's it's Alan. Oh no, it's Alan. Sorry, my bad. At three in the morning, Andy let out his first cry. When ma. (laughs) <laughs> it was a scream I have never heard before. Ma! Ma! <laughs> Ma I gotta Apple get the in here. Apple slices. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> I didn't know we had smokers in the family until I had my baby. <laughs> he came out of the wound with a pack of cigarettes in one hand. <laughs> I don't know how I came across those. I don't even smoke. <laughs> Mush me up a fucking banana. 
when you know normally normally when 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 a baby is born it's the dad who gives out the cigars but the baby was ready he just started handing them out find cuban cigars <laughs> Do you want to keep reading i've never heard before i woke up from a nap on the couch and froze at the sound of utter despair it didn't seem to belong to a baby <laughs> Ma! <laughs> it was one loud wail on a single inhale that would rip a grown man's throat. <clears throat> Ma! We <laughs> <laughs> have to finish the paragraph. <laughs> I'm swimming in this diaper. Fuck! <laughs> If I wasn't seeing Andy in his crib with his mouth white agape and his face red in intensity, I would have thought someone was being murdered nearby. <laughs> I thought I would have thought someone was having a domestic nearby. <laughs> I'm sorry, came back. I know you 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 gave it to us. This yeah. is how we get through the horror. The that's is going to be happen. so. This is going to be so not funny in about five minutes. So we better get it out now. I know. Right. <laughs> This. I know it's we're gonna, gonna be regret so this. Dark. Let's have this moment. Let's have this. <laughs> we, oh. we took to Andy to the hospital immediately. During our ride, he stopped screaming only to breathe in and cry. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> so okay, um, probably most people have heard our dog like won't shut the fuck up and bark like continuously. She's chill right now. She's though. chill thank right you, now, Mason. thank God. But like, there's been times where she'll continuously bark. Her voice gets hoarse, and she goes to get water, and then comes back and barks some more. <laughs> oh my god, I'm laughing at the other thing. Not even my dog. Okay. <laughs> just the just the idea for me, like, ah, eh, eh. Hold on, that's better. <laughs> okay. Uh. <laughs> By the time we reach the I don't think I can do this. Do you want to take a moment, Kayla? Oh my Please god, take a moment. Okay. Breathe in. <laughs> Breathe out. Get some water. Get some water. <laughs> I, I, I think I need water, David. <laughs> I'll I'll, t- I'll pick up. Yeah. I'll pick up where you left off. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, Kayla has left the uh, the building. You'll probably still hear her laughing in, in the distance. Um, by the time we reached the reception desk, Andy had already taken his third long breath, his voice turning into a low, hoarse ball, more similar to a sound of a dying animal than a baby cry. Ah! <laughs> the doctors took him in immediately and used mild sedatives to calm him down. Me and Ray spend, 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 I should be spent. Uh, sorry. Me, me and Ray spent an hour in the waiting room, still shocked and with ringing in our ears. When we saw Andy again, he was half a, in a half asleep state in a nurse's protective embrace. Who we did it? Okay, did so it. let's let's pause for a moment and actually like analyze the the story here. <laughs> so the baby, the baby is just behaving really erratically. Like mm-hmm. now, what is it? I mean, it was behaving very sedately until it started screaming. Well, there was also like they observed that it seemed like the baby was like making weird noises and he's looking at his hands and well, he wasn't and making scary. weird noises. He was just like studying his body. Wasn't he? Yeah. Or wasn't or he? It seemed like he was really intense. Or he was like choking or I, well, babies naturally do like are very curious when they realize, Oh my God, I have hands and feet. And that's why. They right. Keep putting it yeah. In their but I think, which is what I interpret that as. Yeah, yeah. 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 So the, the screaming is, is just like bizarre. Is where it's really starting to get. Bizarre, I mean, it, it so. could. I mean, babies do scream when they when something's wrong with them, like they're in pain. Because yeah, they're not sure how to mm-hmm. like comprehend. It feels. It's it, like, feels how- it feels like we are ominously living under a countdown clock right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it like, really does. Okay. Just like seconds till not funny. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. How long till not funny? Okay. Okay. Um, Ray asked what happened. The nurse looked as worried as we were. According to the doctors, Andy was fine. No injuries or trauma. No counting a damaged throat. 
No counting a damage. Not, not, counting. not counting. Not counting a damage throat from all the shouting. Wow. No reason for such a reaction. It's like he had a crisis or something. The nurse said, leaving us with more questions than before. What does that mean? A crisis or something. That's an odd <clears throat> statement, but I kind of get it. It's like, like, like an anxiety attack or something? I think so. It, I think it's the idea. I think the idea behind a crisis is like, I and then they found out they'd left the dark crystal on when they left. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the a better word that could have been used is uh, suffered a traumatic experience or I think you're right, a panic attack. An, an episode. An episode. I think that would have been a better word. Yeah. Use. Yeah, something something deeply traumatizing happened to this child. Crisis yeah. is the wrong word. Crisis is uh, too uh, unemotional, I guess. This baby is a crisis I, I, actor. I, I guess the idea of a crisis sounds like because <laughs> the thing of a when I think of a crisis is more um, as an outer experience, some like, sort of accident that's unfolding currently or something. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, oh, uh, Alan's turn. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. They conducted more tests on Andy, checked his blood pressure, brain waves, and other things. Nothing abnormal was found. But the doctor suggested to seek help in another man. Except for all of the smokes in his in his day. <laughs> yeah. Just like a pack a day, doctor. A pack a day. <laughs> this baby's smoking luckies. They are just so harsh. <laughs> <laughs> what crepes. Nothing abnormal was found, but the doctor suggested to seek help in another medical facility almost two hours away from here. There. Of course he did. We continued. We <laughs> hey, you should like take it somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> you like more money on your expensive baby now? Mm -hmm. There, we continued with the examination, but the results remained the same. <laughs> Subject confirmed baby. We were left with <laughs> a prescription for a throat stimulator and send home. And send home. Yeah, okay, so uh, you watch the, what, you know, just little watches of the tense, uh, the tense there. Yeah. For the word sent and send. Uh, so I, I understand that's a, that's a typo. It's probably a typo, but, uh, you know. For the next few days, the erratic behavior continued. Andy kept wriggling like a chained, chained down lion trying to escape. He couldn't cry any longer due to his damaged throat, but continued with deep guttural grunts. It seemed like he wanted to say something. Whenever I looked down at him, his eyes locked with mine, staring at me with an intensity no infant should be able to experience. I think this idea, what I'm thinking, it, especially with the use of the word crisis, is that this baby might have the mind of an adult. I was thinking it was like an alien that was like in a baby's body going, help, I'm not with my people. Yeah, that's another thing too. Like, this is clearly not a typical, like, this baby clearly can't, is, like the, is comprehending, I am not in my right body. So, the, so your prediction is either this is like an adult <clears throat> mind or an alien mind trapped in a in an infant's body and is slowly coming to the realization that they're trapped in an infant's body like that the mind is progressing faster than the body yeah alternatively the, it could be like a skeleton key situation mm. what's the skeleton i haven't seen skeleton key uh it's it's that's the reference i know it's probably like a twilight zone name that's probably more common but it's a trope where the old person switches body with the young person oh okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. the um I, I I was sipping water at the moment, so I was going to respond. But yeah, the, the skeleton key. I think we have a copy of that, too. We haven't somewhere. seen it yet, but... It's a good movie. Let's find out what year it was made. <laughs> yeah, I was about to ask, <laughs> what year did that one come out? Uh, uh, oh, what, this would be you. Then. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, why don't you let me know at the end of this, this 2005. Paragraph. Oh, it's, okay. <laughs> yeah, like, garbage! So it's, not, it's garbage. It's, it's muff cabbage. <laughs> then the pounding began. It started one morning when I was talking to Ray. Andy was lying in his crib, unusually calm. We assumed he was still asleep. When none of us were, was paying attention, he wriggled himself toward the end of the bed and, weak at first, started to pound his head on the plastic tube on the side rail. We heard it immediately, but it took him three seconds to regain his strength and thrash his forehead against the tube with a loud bang. A long bang. Sure, should that be loud bang? I don't know. I feel like it should be loud. By the time we reached him and wrapped him in a blanket to secure his limbs, Andy had already fractured his skull, ending with a red swollen bulge above his eyes. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Clock, clock's done. <laughs> there's there's Can't the be clock. funny no more. Not allowed. Uh, they must have taken away his cigarettes. They found him in the diaper, and now he's... <laughs> he's th those withdrawals, man. Those withdrawals. <laughs> Give a fix. Ma! <laughs> Ma, I need my luckies. 
Fuck! <laughs> every time Andy was able to move, he tried banging his head on every hard surface he could. Jesus. It you know, didn't I know, end. Huh? I know, like, toddlers will, like, run into stuff, but they don't try to. Like, Yeah, they, they just don't start- like pain. They like, cry when they tod- feel pain. Yeah, and this isn't a toddler either. Like, he's This still, is an infant. This is an infant. Oh, it did end with pounding, though. Andy could charge at anyone who took him in their arms. Could charge at anyone who took... Could How? So, he like, would, he would... They'd go to pick him up, and he would go, Roar, and he would just charge at them? I don't know. I, I think that there could be a better wording for that. Yeah. He Maybe. would slam, hit, and kick with all his strength. Uh, with all of the strength an infant possessed, only to startle people and make them let go of him. And he fell down to the ground multiple times injuring himself to the point of surgery but never letting out a cry of pain instead he would start bashing his head on the floor ignoring the broken broken bones and bruises yikes Blech. Jeez. this uh this just i don't know this this sounds like um uh, the those other like i don't know much about horror writing but this sounds like a lot of stories where a person hurts themselves um like there was an episode of black mirror where guy like was getting off when he felt pain and so he started to stuff things in his skin and stuff like that oh um, huh yeah um i know that's a mental disorder of some yeah kind. that's an actual thing but i don't know the term for it hmm. but yeah there's people that will i mean it's i don't just even a, want to think about it that's like uh, yeah exactly so it just seems to me like you, do you really have to get that descriptive when you're talking about something like a, a baby hurting itself? Well, what, like when it would, uh, uh, I mean, I don't know. Well, I mean, that the, does. The, we're, we're, this is from the mother's in, perspective. In one sense, that does add a little bit of, I think the horror comes from that discomfort. Like mm-hmm. the fact that it is describing an infant trying to hurt itself. We're feeling uncomfortable as a result. Mm-hmm. And that does create the response that I think the authors try to make. Okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. So th- there's it's, that part. It, I think I it's creating you... a desired response, but it, it we we do we do need to kind of see where it's going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it <clears throat> with things like this, you, you better have a good fucking explanation. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, it's just like body horror, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, and the horror comes from something that is just inherently terrible to a lot of people, which is watching some watching violence happen to an infant. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're on you're on thin ice, came back. Air bun. All right, Alan, it's your turn. Uh, um, Read the dark my baby part. Boy, my baby boy was forced to be tied down like a lunatic. So this is Hannibal Lecter as an infant. Almost can't regularly it, sedated. What a timeout. With a little baby, can't you just bundle it really tight, like in one of those little wrappy thingies? And then they they're good because they can't move and they like like that. Um can't you put the infant in like a super soft, squishy place where there is no hard surfaces anywhere? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's literally what you do when you bundle up a baby. You you tie you you put the baby in essentially a hammock. Yeah. No, but there, there's, there's like the hammock is one thing, but no, there's there's also like baby wraps. That you know, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't. They don't make baby straight jackets for a reason. The reason is you don't need them. Yeah. <laughs> you can wrap it. Well, you can, can bundle a baby. I'm it's picturing a someone holding. I'm picturing someone holding a baby, and they turn and like this is my baby, and it's got the handle like their mask on its. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh man, we got another one of the crazy babies. Put it in the jelly room. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, what was we guys? We we, we, Almost... we found the funny again. We managed to find the funny again. Al- Alan, I think you... put him in put him in the jelly room. <laughs> <laughs> Almost regularly sedated and under constant supervision. Andy spent several weeks in the hospital. At first, only his mouth and eyes weren't restrained, but the moment his throat recovered, the inhuman cries returned. Now his eyes were the only part he could control. I remember him staring at me with no end, muzzle in mouth, almost Whoa. begging me to do something. I only watched him back and sobbed. Oh my gosh, it really is Hannibal Lecter. Oh my gosh. Little, uh, this, Hannah Baby Lecter? Hannah Baby Lecter. I, 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 feel like, I feel like we're jumping from like, I, I understand that it's intense, but I feel like we, we made a big jump from like 
like finding other solutions to we literally have to I restrain mean, this baby like well, the is, sorry the thing about babies is they already hurt themselves all the time just by like existing so there are methods of 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 protecting a baby from themselves I, we, I can only, we can only assume extreme, without this we can only assume nature. they've already I, tried I, the jelly room uh, no, I mean, that, <laughs> that's a lot of they just need 240 dollars worth of pudding in obviously. all honesty i think yeah. that this could be helped by doing more research like on what is because i mean the way babies are handled is very different from how adults are handled in a doctor's office of course right so i am curious i know k max said that this is a story that they'd already essentially shared around and actually got some some decent feedback on in, in mm-hmm. the public sphere so they shared it with us, or uh, she shared it with us out of, um, uh, I, I guess, just wanting to get our perspective okay. on it. Okay. And so I guess, it, you know, it must, it must work for a few people. I'm just saying, like, I think that, I think it is fair to be like, so what, what I want to know about the additional steps that could have been taken, you yeah. know? I want to sort of see the, the, the evolution of this. But, but, in- but and again, this is a, this is a baby that for all intents and purposes is actively trying to is actively trying to harm himself, like intelligently trying to harm himself. I think the tricky part with babies for himself. Uh, uh, the tricky part with babies in general, when it comes to this sort of thing, um, especially if you're a narrator playing a mom with your child, th- there's a fine line between um, because the narrator is a parent, they're going to be judged, no, no doubt about it. So, like mm. in, in this thing, we're saying, why are they going to all these? hoops just to do this isn't this quite the jump but then imagine like saying what if they did less than this there could be people saying what the hell is wrong with you why wouldn't you do so much for your baby if this was happening so Mm -hmm. there is that kind it's kind of hard to figure out like what is that fine line yeah between how much a parent would go through and whether something is too much or not Mm -hmm. or over the top but yeah i think the the I, then again, I, I like Alan said. I think we need to continue to see what the hell is going on. Yeah, I I will say this much. I'm I'm hooked. I, mm-hmm. I want to know. Although I'm still thinking, we still think in we still think in someone trapped in a baby's body. <laughs> I, I think I, I'm now thinking um, for Freakers, right? I think it's like an alien stuck in the baby's body, and they're trying to get out. Um, that's my. I'm I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> it's uh, a shitty xenomorph because they can't just pop out and yeah. leave. <laughs> uh, Ray took time off work. I spend almost every hour in Andy's hospital room. The view of an IV attached to his tiny fragile arm made me cry every night. I wanted to help him so so much. Why does he need an IV? Because he can't. He can't oh, open his mouth. Well, because uh, another thing too. Uh, probably the IV is <clears throat> they're giving him drugs to calm him down. That's the only thing. I well, know. it's a baby. Can't you just? Well, don't they do that thing of like rubbing? Sorry, I'm doing it again. Right. I know I'm doing it again, but it seems to me that a lot of the problems that, you know, you don't need a baby straight jacket for, you don't need an IV for it, you need a little bit of whiskey on the teeth or something like that, and that would handle a baby just fine. And I get that it's an intelligent baby, but it still has a baby amount of fluids in its body. <laughs> give that baby, like you said, give that baby some whiskey. <laughs> Give that baby a stiff life. drink and <laughs> give that baby some whiskey and a cigarette. Uh, some whiskey and cigarettes. Oh man, that's a cool <laughs> baby. <laughs> give that baby like a pair of sunglasses. I want to party with that baby. <laughs> your turn, David. <laughs> uh, no, it's. I thought it was your. Oh no, it is me. I just read. We met with maybe a dozen doctors who tried to cure Andy. Some from other states, some from Asia and Europe. Almost every one of them implied some kind of psychological trauma. But that was it. I grew irritated with it. All those smart asses thinking they knew everything while my baby was suffering. Hey, excuse us. We're just reading the fucking story. <laughs> <laughs> We're just judging this mother harshly while reading this story. Yeah. Um, it was Dr. Oh, here we go. Neha ba- Bachankla <laughs> <laughs> came up with the solution. Um, ba- ba- Bakchaha? I'm just going to call her Neha Bachankla because I like it. After okay. she examined Andy, she took me to her office for discussion. 
I thought she would babble about some brain trauma that didn't exist, but her train of thoughts took a completely different route. I listened to her confounded, trying to process what she was saying, trying to say. Do you believe in reincarnation, Mrs. Wayne? She asked with a strong accent. Oh, oh, oh okay, because she's because oh. she's because she's Indian. Indian. Oh, that's an Indian name. I think yeah, so. It's, I don't know yeah. if it's African or um. I'm gonna look it up. This is. Uh, it's so not it's, Indian. It's Nepal. I'm so sorry. It's okay. So it's so it's yeah. I kind of figured it was like something like yes. South Asian. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was just like. <clears throat> I don't really think so, I replied. Dr. Pacha continued. (laughs) When we die, Mrs. Wayne, our souls don't disappear. Instead, they wander among the other dead until they find a new life they can inhabit so they can respawn. They find a pregnant woman and possess her baby. (laughs) Yeah. They find a pregnant woman and possess her baby to continue the life cycle. I I need to pause here just for a moment um, because you know what? What they're describing here is basically what I got from uh, Om Shanti Om. Have you mom. ever heard of a bagul? <laughs> bagul? Hello? Uh, I, I, I know it's one of my favorite words to say like this. Look at this fucking bagul. <laughs> <laughs> That's... Hey, mommy, I'm a bagul. <laughs> Ma, I'm a bagul. Get oh. out of this bagul over here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I listened I listen to her gripping my purse with shaking hands. Uh, Dr. <laughs> voice is uh, was calm and soothing, like a warm bath after a long day. She seemed confident in what she was saying. I will say, when we die, was when we die, Mrs. Wayne, your son will become a bat to avenge you. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Um, okay, I'll, 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 I, I might... Okay, never mind. I was going to elaborate on the Om Shanti Om thing, but I won't, I won't worry yeah. about that. Would you um, say that this baby's an old soul? Oh! Hey! The moment they enter a new body, the memories of their previous life start to disappear. They start anew. This is why none of us remember our infant years. Then the child grows old and dies, and their soul finds another body to inhabit. The sheer amount of memories stored in one soul would be too much for one living human to comprehend. What is happening to Andy, Doctor? I asked. Nothing else mattered to me. Nothing really matters. Dr. Bachankla took a moment to collect her thoughts. I think something went wrong with Andy. He was supposed to forget his previous life and start a new one as a baby, but he didn't. Couldn't forget the taste of smokes. His body (laughs) is of a two-month-old infant, but his mind might be of a much older person. A person with their own memories, thoughts, hopes, and dreams from God knows how many years ago supposedly. If uh-huh. suddenly you were trapped in a baby's body, Mrs. Wayne, what would you do? I, my voice shook, I remembered the screams, the suicide attempts, the longing stares of someone who wanted to say something. Well, we pegged that pretty early. Yeah, damn. Oh, I just read ahead. Oh my god. Yes! Okay. <laughs> when Andy was five months old, I hunched above his crib. His eyes looked at me with distress, his mouth in constant motion, articulating a string of single syllables. His attempts to talk took several weeks, but I waited patiently. <laughs> do, do, do it, David. Ma! Ma! <laughs> Ma! <laughs> yes! Oh my god! It comes full circle! I listened in silence, only the evening buzz of the hospital halls murmuring behind my back. Ray was home, trying to rest after taking a mouthful of sleeping pills. He gonna die. I haven't told him about my conversation with Dr. Bakachaka. Maybe because I wasn't sure I believed in it myself. Maybe because I needed proof. Andy's face scrunched in agony. A violent bruise above his barely opening eye blistered in the light of the lamp. He was so restrained, but after he stopped with the screaming probably because he wasn't able to raise his voice any longer, the nurses allowed me to remove the muzzle. I'm pretty sure Andy understood what that meant, because after that he focused all his strength on speaking. Every day I heard him verbalizing. First it was cooing, then single sounds, then vowels, then two-syllable words. Despite his injuries... Isn't that normal for a baby? Um, Sorry. Despite his... They eventually start to talk. Some start to talk really early, but mm-hmm. 
Despite his injuries and suicidal tendencies, Andy was doing all he could to say something. Five months earlier, the thought of Andy's not first words would make me grin and joy, but all that was left in me was some kind of cool-headed numbness. Ma! <laughs> Ma! Ma! <laughs> <laughs> uh, y- yes? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but I whispered. Andy's only good eye glimmered with hope. I leaned even more over the crib, gripping my hands on the bars. My top. Make it stop? I asked. What I can only describe as a dreamlike state where everything irrational seems normal. Andy nodded into his head in agreement. Oh, that's the end? That's, that's the, the end. end. So baby wants to kill himself. Oh, yeah. Good. <clears throat> what a great story. Mother. Will you assist my suicide? <laughs> or at least get me a smoke. For God's, for Christ's sakes. Um, yeah, I kind of feel like this needed to go somewhere else. Yeah. it. I, we I, we I, did peg it kind of early. We did. Because yeah. I was like, I've, it, well, I, we got four brains in the room. <laughs> that's true. And we all, and we've read like a metric ton of horror stories. So, um, you know, I don't think I, I. I still. I think this. There's a lot of merit with this. Still, I yeah. think it's a neat. I think like the it, horror. It's an of, the, idea. the main horror of it is. It comes from just the the discomfort. The discomfort of it, and then yeah, having the idea that this is a reincarnated soul that remembers everything from their past life. Like, hmm. well, none of us are like parents, so I wonder if like if a parent read this, how they would feel. Like, would this be even more horrifying? Yeah, that's the point. Hmm. Hmm. If he, I mean, like, if hmm. I'm getting older, yeah, I like, know. why would a mom who just had a baby want to be horrified while having a baby? Like, why would they want that for themselves? Yeah. Well, they wouldn't want to be horrified. I mean, I, I, I meant like, uh, I, I'm thinking just a parent in general who would read this and see and kind of see what their reaction would be. Well, like, uh, you know, I'll, 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 I can make a, a statement that only slightly relates. Okay. Um, because this is interesting. So, um, I Paprika will appreciate this. I just watched a, a video about the the Tacoma Bridge disaster, mm-hmm. and <laughs> and they were um, talking about how the only the only casualty of that was a was a, a oh my gosh cocker a, spaniel a cocker spaniel. Mm. Oh oh hi Gracie. She, was, I think she barked in her sleep and woke herself up. Oh, it sounded she like did. she didn't like the fact that you used the word cock, but that was <laughs> my perspective. And well, anyway, well, she doesn't like that I'm talking about other dogs. I think that's part of it. Well, but you know, they talk about how the only casualty was a cocker spaniel that was stuck in the one car that was left on the bridge, and people tried to get it and it wouldn't leave the car, so it fell into the river when the bridge. And I did all I could think to myself was like, like in I was like. That's, you know, some people be like, wow, that's really sad. And then I'm like, all I could picture was like, well, what if that was Gracie? And it was like, mm-hmm. and it yeah. like hit me way hard. Like the horror of that happening to a little dog yeah. got to me. So that, that, that's why I'm saying. Yeah, that's I, saying, I'm just saying in terms of, I, I don't know if I can, I, it's, well, maybe, it's if I was a parent and I read this. It's interesting I would really that you bring that story up because like the, what happened to the Tacoma Bridge is like fascinating. Yeah. Fascinating. It goes into every bridge that's built today. The mm-hmm. story like touches on the idea of re- reincarnation in a very abstract way. Yeah. And doesn't make it fascinating. And so we can't hold on to that. Mm-hmm. And then the ending is just the baby wants to kill itself. Oh, okay. Well, we, we kind of already know that. We, yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. So, so um, I mean, the that story about the dog on the bridge, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a terrible comparison, but it's, it's more fascinating to me. Because of the scenario, the logic progression of the dog being afraid while on this bridge and not allowing people to save it um, ended up in its demise. Like, I don't know. But this story doesn't have anything like that. It just has a scared mother and then that's it. I I think that's the thing. There's not, it's a, there really isn't a, not to say that every story needs a beginning, middle and end, but it doesn't really. Well, where does, I mean, where do we go from here? Like, yeah. I feel like there should be a no. tense shift. I feel like one thing that might help is if there's like a tense shift here. Like mm. maybe this is the mother just 
I, I want to know where we are in time. Like, how old is Andy now? How long ago mm. was this? Andy still an infant? Is Andy? Yeah, well, is Andy a, a child now? Well, I think it's hinted that Andy's dead because it, um, she says he had blue eyes, and that kind of did. Ooh, now, but- oh, you know what would be? I think would make this a real twist ending is like, and you know, something even some cryptic is like Andy not you know, make it stop, and then like understanding that this is a per like like it'd be really horrific if the mother does kill the baby or something because the baby asks for it help. would be really horrific like that, that, would be... that would be too horrific well okay i mean the way i'd want the story to go the way i've got it formulated in my mind and maybe it's not the right way to take the story but what i want to what i would want from this story is the mother to like make the baby okay with being a baby and in in that sort of um quest that adventure to make the baby like realize it's a baby and maybe forget its previous life develop a connection with it and then sort of rebuild the relationship of mother baby that's what i'd be interested in that's a very that's a very but then that's like not as much of a horror story i guess yeah but i like i mean i like it i like that that's another direction it could go and i think that would be a really fascinating story but does it work as a horror story in that sense i think I think uh, one thing, I mean, there. the thing is, it's going in the direction that we expected. Because even like when I, it's like we said, we heard like, oh, the baby seems this. And I'm like, it's probably, I, I mean, I already guessed like, oh, it's probably this. And then we already guessed the baby probably died, which means, and even as I'm reading, I'm like, the baby's going to want to commit suicide. Mm-hmm. This is what's happening. Well, yeah, it was, it was obvious that the, the description around surrounding the baby they described quite well that the baby was intelligent and that the baby wanted to hurt itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They did, they did a good job there. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I think um, there should be something to subvert that though. Cause along uh, throughout, I'm like, Oh, okay. I know this is happening. This, I mean, wouldn't it be interesting if maybe the baby did grow older and it seemed like, Oh, eventually he did forget. Cause it's that idea. Cause remember there's that idea. Like we don't have many memories from when we were infants and mm-hmm. like, it's kind of the whole baby genius. I just, I, I, I feel like, yeah, I just almost feel like the story ends prematurely, you know? Yeah, totally. I feel, yeah, I think there could be more. There should be like, we, it's not finished. You know what? That's actually the main issue. It doesn't feel feel finished. Okay. But so, I mean, and we know like from previous stories and even from this one that like uh, came back is actually a very, is a very competent writer, very competent storyteller. I've really enjoyed the, her. The other dog words. one was really good. Yeah, yeah. Game of Tag was very good too. And like, um, um, I mean, I would almost like want to encourage um Kane Mac to uh revisit this story and see if they could take it in a certain it doesn't have to be anything we suggest. It's just like I I want to I feel like this this has potential. You just it's it it's feels, not meeting that potential in, it feels in our it's unfinished. in my opinion. Yeah, it just th- feels unfinished. But it could, but it could be. Yes. Like the, the, the ending leaves a bit to be desired. And I feel like it could, there could be more. What do you think, Alan? <clears throat> yeah, it feels like we're getting the beginning and middle of a story and not the end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I feel like there's interesting things that can be done. Like, fuck it. We could be just beginning the beginning of a story and not the middle or end. Because I feel like there, there's a lot of interesting things that can be done with the idea of this child growing older with, you know, the thoughts of someone else in his head. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, I feel like... I feel like we're cut off just when things could get interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like the focus of the horror, though, for this is the body horror, and I don't think that's yeah. enough. Yeah. It feels like act one was the baby hurting itself. Act two is the baby learning to talk, and we just got, what, maybe a glimpse of act two. And yeah. then yeah. act three is big question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> act four is profit. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, I will, yeah, I think... I think with that in mind, let's let's give this uh, let's give this our freshness ratings. I will give this um, uh, one tiny Hannibal Lecter mask <laughs> out of um, a baby proof hammock. I will give this, I'll give a, this uh, a, um, a Cuban cigar coming right out of the mother's womb. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. 
Is that your review? Um, I will I will give this the review it deserves. Uh, as far as I can tell, it came out after Airbud, so. Uh, <laughs> it's not released this... in the window between Airbud and Space Jam, so sorry. <laughs> I will give this story merit for inventing the baby straitjacket, which didn't need to exist. <laughs> I did. I did want to touch on like my mental, my my mental image of like this hospital, like hospital being like, "Fuck, we can finally use all these baby straps we've been saving for some reason." <laughs> <laughs> ah, <laughs> finally, we're a bad hospital. Um, <laughs> I, I will say this was not Doctor Apathy's finest hour. No, it was not Doctor Apathy's finest hour. Woo! Uh, Kane Mac, thank you for sharing this with us. Really appreciate it. Uh, take take what you will from this or not. Either way, we appreciate the uh, the experience. Uh, it's always great to get together with my co-hosts here and oh, you know, read some stuff, stuff. I haven't I feel like I haven't laughed this hard in a while. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I I may have to admit that I've made a mistake. Oh. What? There is a site. It's called healthproductsforyou.com. And oh, it no. sells the humane <laughs> restraint lynch jacket in a size small 36 to 42 each. Oh my god. <laughs> this exists? It, this exists. I, I thought it would exist like as a costume or something. Like, oh, look at how cute my baby is. It's the baby. Like Halloween. a Halloween. It just like, like you go to Halloween. spirit Halloween. No, okay, sorry, your... sorry. No, no, no. This fits juvenile to adult. I just put in baby straight jacket and this, would ca- this is what came up. <laughs> oh, I God. Wrong. I was scared for a second there. <laughs> DIY project. Well, I mean. The, the baby straight it's jacket. It's never said that it's. Oh, wait. He, uh, it's never said that they actually she was actually the baby was in a straight jacket. It said it was restrained no, like I, a lunatic. But... Sure. I mean, but right underneath it there I are mean, a whole bunch of there's, pictures there's, of there's, a bundle yeah, of babies. Of <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's definitely equivalents, that's for sure. I, I don't think they should get the actual straight jacket for a baby. Like I mean oh my God. This is close Wait. enough. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's a bundle it's the same thing as a bundled baby you don't need to go to a hospital for that shit that's all i'm saying all I, I, i'm saying yeah that's basically the equivalent uh well actually here's one that's pretty Just hog tie your baby <laughs> <laughs> well i mean there's also there's also okay i'm seeing baby. advertisements for a product that is 100 percent a velgro baby straight jacket and it's called snuggle wings <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, Which wins the contest for the fucking funniest thing to call a baby straight. <laughs> oh my god. You know what? I'll, I'll give came back this. They she fucking gave us this. Oh no. Oh. There's no pictures. Wait. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my baby's going to try to kill himself. Quick, get the snuggle wing. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> snuggle wing. Oh. <laughs> oh, what an adorable little constrained child. <laughs> hey, hey, snuggle wings. Do you need <laughs> podcast sponsorship? <laughs> if, if, if you um enjoy this show. Listen to other shit on our Korean horror channel. We have we have many fine podcasts on this network, including The Witching Hour, Darkly Lit, Midnight Marinara, Trick or Track, and uh, Creepy Cooking Staff to a degree, um, which has now been enfolded into this podcast. We uh, just keep listening to this bullshit podcast. If, Buy yourself if, a pair of snuggle wings yes. for the future. If you want to hear us laugh uproariously over your attempt at a serious story, please please feel free to submit your work to us by emailing uh, us at midnightmarinera at gmail dot com. Uh, you we we will read your story and be completely honest about it and try to be positive and upbeat about our feedback, just like we try to be positive and upbeat about our baby straitjackets. <laughs> uh, 
If you are a patron of this show, you can hear the nonsense that happened before this and many other things. If you join our Patreon at any dollar level, it's a Midnight Marinara Patreon, which is also the undercooked analysis shared one. We have a lot of nonsense there, backlog of archived material going back pretty much from Midnight Marinara's inception, just about. Um, and patrons also can join our Discord, be part of the discussion there, and get priority when it comes to writing submissions for uh, this podcast. That's pretty much all I have to plug. Um, I ha- I have no words. <laughs> this is- oh, Don't- uh, we have a, we have an Alan recommends which we haven't done in a while. Oh, that's true. What do you recommend, Alan? Uh, currently free right now on PlayStation Plus for the month of February is a game called Control. Oh, I heard, uh, yeah, you were talking about this game. And it's basically uh, an an SCP Foundation game without using the name SCP Foundation. And it's I've been playing it for like a week now, and it's like crawling up, like becoming one of my favorite games of all time. Oh, wow. Um, I'll have to check. We might, we might check this out. Here's the best review I can give this game. You know how, like, games like Skyrim and now Cyberpunk, they have, like, bits of lore you can collect and read and, like, listen to and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of that in Control, and I have read and listened to and watched every bit of it. Oh, Damn. wow. I, I am so interested in just, like, the lore and backstory of, like, this game. It's heck yeah, fucking good. That's a good review. That's a good review. That's a good recommendation. I bless you. Hi, Gracie. And, and again, for the rest of February, if you have a PlayStation Plus subscription, it is free. Well said. <laughs> Sorry, Gracie. Gracie woke up and is now flailing about mm-hmm. as if she's possessed we by may, something we else. We may need to give her snuggle wings. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is, hey, uh, Gracie's is... way. Ma! <laughs> <laughs> Ma! Oh, your dog smokes too? Yeah. (laughs) All the time. Have you not heard her bark? Wait, she has to go and drink some water first and then she'll bark. Good evening, intrepid listeners. This is the Pasta Shade, the host of Midnight Marinara, and this podcast is part of CreativeHorror.com, a network of podcasts and creators working together to build a constructive community of horror fans. For more content like this, visit us at creativehorror.com. (laughs) Ha 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 ha